Hello, welcome to Jadekind Gaming. My name is Adam and today I will be unboxing another of the Disney Lorcana trading card game starter decks uh, by Ravensburger. This is the Rise of the Floodboard, so the second set, and it is the Amber and Sapphire deck. So, um, it's the third and at this, you know, at the time of recording, the, the last of the decks that I've been able to pick up, which I also, like the other two, uh, got for like Christmas. Um, now, the difference is, it's been a bit since I opened those other two, and I've gotten to play, and I've actually had quite a bit of fun. Uh, I've used the other couple of decks and gotten to play with my fiance, and so, yeah, she does board games and D and D and such, but she's had minimal experience with trading card games, and so it's been fun getting her into it. Um, she's picking it up a bit quicker than when I tried getting her into Magic, just because she also really loves Disney, and so cool. Um, but. You know, take a look at it. Ooh, what's this smart Gaston looking thing? Um, yeah. Amber and Sapphire. We have the deck list on the side. Um, starter deck. The booster pack. And random-y stuff. So, um, let's... Backwards. Oh. oh, that's different. Okay. Um, okay, so we'll look at cards last. Um, inside the box is this little thing with little punch out tokens, flimsy little cardboard tokens to keep track of damage, and the thing to use playmat. I find the playmat plenty useful for just having a spot for deck, discard, and for marking your cards in play in your inkwell. But you could use this to mark where your lore is, but also it's a piece of paper. The app is much better for that. But yeah, you have it as an option. And then we have the quick start rules, which tell you about what the different cards are and do, how to play, how to build a deck. Multiplayer game rules. Haven't gotten to use those yet, but obviously just two decks, so maybe now I can. Um, some little guidance for using this deck. Yeah. So the rules are included on a nifty little folded up paper. Then we have the deck itself, which is wrapped in this paper. Both of the other decks I got, which means one of them was also... Rise of the Floodborne were in clear plastic, but this is in paper. Um, whatever. So, starting out with our The Queen Commanding Presence. Of course, can be made into ink. Four strength, three willpower. I believe the terms they use. Attack, defend. Strength and willpower. I am the smartest. Floodborne, villain, queen, shift two. So pay two to put it on top of a different the queen. Uh, can quest for two lore. Who is the fairest? Whenever this character quests, chosen opposing character gets minus four strength this turn, and chosen character gets plus four strength this turn. Ooh. So quest with her, and then use someone else to challenge. Uh, Gaston cannot be made into ink. Four, four. Uh, can pay four to put on top of another Gaston. This is Intellectual Powerhouse. And, ooh, well, questing for three is nice. Developed Brain. When you play this character, look at the top three cards of your deck. You may put one into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. Okay, okay. Bashful. So, yeah, he can be ink. Um, he is a seven dwarves. This character can't quest unless you have another seven dwarves character in play. Which, I mean, technically could uh, just be double bashful, but that's a lot to quest for. For four? Ooh. Um, Christopher Robin. We'll always be together. Whenever you're ready, this character, if you have two or more other characters in play, gain two lore. Whoa. 
quest for two gets two as he's ready oh man this deck okay is it did they they put uh, no those are uncommon i was like but he is a rare so i'm looking at some of the rares another seven dwarves character whenever this character quests pay one less for the next character you play this turn uh, dopey uh this character is banished your other seven dwarves characters get plus two uh strength until the start of your next turn uh different gaston he's a little cheaper uh, singer five character counts as five to sing fun the grand duke uh prince princess king and queen characters get an extra strength nice grumpy uh, there's trouble of ruin. Other seven dwarves characters get plus one uh, strength. You see, all the seven dwarves are helping the other dwarves. Happy. Uh, whenever this character quests, you may add their strength to another chosen character's strength this turn. Seven dwarves, but doesn't rely on the other seven dwarves. Okay. The few. Loyal. Um, if you have a character named Gaston in play, you pay one less. Uh, to play this character sleepy enters the play exerted so again doesn't do anything to help your other seven dwarves but he counts amongst their numbers sneezy achoo whenever you play this character or another seven dwarves character you may give chosen character minus one strength this turn and who would the seven dwarves be without snow white uh, I won't hurt you when you play this character, you may remove up to two damage from chosen character. We have the Queen, Regal Monarch, 2-2 two, two for one. Um, but having this one out means that this five cost character only costs two, so three total. So, yeah, that's a good point to build from. There's three. To increase your odds of getting them. Um, painting the rose is red. I love an Alice in Wonderland themed card. Uh, character with cost two or more can tap. Oh, it's a song. Uh, up to two chosen characters get minus one strength this turn and draw a card. Drawing a card is great. I have found so much of the issues in the game being you just because you're putting a card down face down and then hopefully playing a card every turn you run out of cards so quick. Um, so things that let you draw are useful. Belle, inventive engineer, dreamborn. She's the engineer like her father in this hero, princess, and inventor. Tinker, when this, whenever this character quests, you may pay uh, one less the next time you play, uh, for the next item you play this turn. Quest for two. Corral de Ville. Um, so on my turn, gains events evasive. They can challenge characters with evasive, but don't have the defensive benefits of it. Um, oh, inventor. Um, Judy hops. Owl. Logical lecturer. Uh, it's just, uh, an easy, quick play. Only costs one, easy to play early in the game. Useful to have some of those for sure. Um, Phil. Trainer of Heroes, support. Whenever this character quests, you may add their strength to chosen character's strength this turn. Hmm. Whatever the knock is. Winnie the Pooh! Having a think. Honeypot, whenever this character quests, you may put a card from your hand into your inkwell face down. Allowing you to build up your ink quicker. Very good. Earlier in the game. I was a lad, I had four dozen eggs every morning to help me grow large. So, song, uh, your characters gain resist plus two until the start of your next turn. Damage dealt to them is reduced by two. Launch an action, banish chosen item of yours to deal five damage to chosen character. Great. Items. Fang crossbow. Three, it can be made into ink, which is useful. I have minimal use. I've used items minimally. Uh, careful aim. Tap. Pay two. Chosen character gets minus two strength this turn. Stay back. Tap. Banish this item. Banish chosen dragon character. Okay. Okay. 
Gumbo Pot. For two, tap, remove one damage uh, each from up to two chosen characters. Popsicle. Ooh, tiny. Like, needlessly tiny font here because there's extra space. It could have just gone onto another line. Uh, Jumbo Pop. Uh, when you play this item, you may draw a card. That's Redwood. Banish this item and remove up to two damage from chosen character. All right. And then we have our Rise of the Floodborne booster pack. So now they're the queen. We got some of those already in there. All right, Alice in Wonderland themed croquet mallet item. Uh, Hurtling Hedgehog. Banish this item. Chosen character gains rush this turn. They can challenge the turn they're played. Okay, so you get to give someone rush at some point. Peter Pan's dagger. Uh, your characters with evasive get plus one strength. Flynn Rider. It's a one cost. Good early play. Basil! No, nothing fancy there. Uh, Cinderella Knight in Training. I've had her in one of the other decks earlier. Uh, oh, Pinocchio. On the run. Uh, can shift. Pay for three. Listen to your conscience. When you play this character, you may return chosen character or item with cost three or less to their player's hand. Uh, another Dopey. Okay. Another Judy Hops. Cogsworth. Grandfather Clock. Shift 3, so you can pay him, play him cheaper. Ward. Opponents can't choose this character except to challenge. Unwind. Your other characters gain resist plus 1. Damage dealt to them is reduced by 1. Then... Oh! Oh! That's Alice. That's a legendary. That is Alice. I got Alice. Um, I already want to play blue, and part of the big part of the reason is because I knew it's where Alice is. I also love blue sapphire, um, and now I have her. She's one that I I would have either bought packs in search of, and obviously you know might be better to have more than one. Uh, would have bought packs in search of, or. Or just bought straight out so I can have her in the deck. I'm happy. Um, Alice can be made into ink. Cost three. Alice, growing girl. One willpower. Four, or, um, or one strength, four willpower. Quest for one. Good advice. I always give my such self such very good advice. I very seldom follow it. Uh, your other characters gain support whenever they quest. You may add their strength to another chosen character's strength this turn. What did I do? While this character has 10 strength or more, she gets plus 4 lore. Oh, so when your other character, your other, all your other characters gain support when they quest. So if, if you have at least 9 strength worth of characters quest and you add it all to Alice, then Alice can quest for 5 yeah, that's awesome. Uh, and then uh, Lady Tremaine, um, not for you. When you play this character, each opponent with more lore than you loses one lore. Um, and the little puzzle piece. Um, yeah, I've got Alice. That that made me happy. Like I, I flipped over to it, and I was actually because I have the little thing here. I was like. Oh, what rarity is that first? Like, I didn't even register what the card was in the first moments. I looked at the rarity. I was like, oh, that's a legendary. What legendary card did I get? And I'm like, wait a minute. That's Alice. So that's cool. This is already... Um, I put it off for last, but this is already a deck that I've kind of been looking forward to. Um, the whole Seven Dwarfs thing seemed kind of nifty strategy kind of thing. And it had Sapphire. And Sapphire is the one that I've been like, ooh, I want to play Sapphire. Um... And I got Alice. So I'm 
I'm super pleased. Um, this is fun. So yeah, um, I will link down below where you can pick up, hopefully, some Larkana cards online, um, you know, as they are available uh, or not. <laughs> but um, but yeah, if you've played, let me know your thoughts. I've I've only played with my fiance, but we've played I don't know ten five or ten games probably. Um, we, we've we've been having fun with it, um, and I look forward to playing more um, and getting more stuff as further sets come out and maybe catching up on some of the, the first chapter stuff that I missed out on. Who knows? But um, but cool. I got Alice. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Bye.